So I'm here at another 1450 and these things in today's age, you need to pay close attention. I've had a number of issues with ours. I've had to reinstall. I've had to change some hardware. You might need to too, because the issue that this guy is having, a friend of mine, he sent me a picture and it's a common issue that some of you are probably facing with the mobile charger. It's restricting charging and sometimes it'll even tell you that there's a heat issue and that is exactly what is happening here. I brought my uh, temp gauge here, so I'll show you the kind of temperatures we're seeing here and I'll explain to you why this is happening and the solution that we have. This is all really important stuff. It's probably not the most exciting thing to talk about, but this is very important for the safety of your home, for the safety of your vehicle, all of that. I do want to also say one more thing. This mobile charger from Tesla, the standard one that comes from them, is actually a pretty sophisticated piece of equipment. It's actually manufactured pretty simply and there's not a lot to it, but internally it does a lot of stuff that can help protect not just your house, but your car too. So this thing, what it's doing is it's understanding that there's a lot of heat happening more than it wants. So it is restricting the charging automatically to protect the vehicle itself. And in turn, it's gonna start pulling less current from the wall and it's gonna help reduce some of the heat coming out of that plug. So with that said, let me get the uh, temp gauge here and show you what kind of temps we're uh, seeing here. This thing has been plugged in for a couple of hours now and it has not kicked down yet, but the temps that we're seeing are pretty high. So let's take a look at that now. So you may have seen this error before and if you have that's what we're going to cover today but you can see here charge rate reduced wall plug temperature is high and the mobile connector is re reducing the charge rate from 32 amps to 16 amps and my friend here he actually reduced it down to 12 even more just as a safety precaution so that's why you see 12 here but this is the mobile connector trying to protect itself in the vehicle that is what is happening here, and that's what we're covering today, how to fix this, certainly, but also how to protect yourself from this happening in the first place. So we have our uh, mobile connector here, and I can already tell I actually was grabbing it um, earlier. It is very warm here, but nothing crazy. The box itself is very, very warm, and we're starting to get close to where up here, this is hot. This is almost too hot to touch. So there's a lot of heat happening right now. So the mobile connector itself, we are looking at about 128 degrees, which is pretty high. And the plug itself, just at about 130 degrees. That's very hot. What's crazy is if we take a reading of the actual back here, I was pulling 140 degrees. There you go, 145 degrees on the back here. The material behind that composite material, it is just absorbing heat and it's not doing an effective job um, alleviating that and the wires themselves when you look at it they're not too bad they're still pretty warm but 125 120 degrees that is you know on the high side of normal this is pretty beefy um, wiring so the wiring doesn't appear to be the issue but this plug itself i will show you this is a problem. This outlet was not made for this type of application. There's two issues with this outlet. So let me unplug this and give you a closer look. Before we do that, just for safety, EV charger 2931. Let's hit that breaker and then let's confirm we don't have power there. All right, good. So let's unplug this now place this to the side and you can actually already see just looking at this you've got some wear happening so these outlets there's no brand listed on it but the one they sell at Home Depot for about $15 that's what this is so I've already looked into it um, this is the Home Depot one the one you find at your hardware store it's not made for this what it's made to do is to power your oven, your stove. Basically, you plug an appliance in once and leave it. And it'll run a couple hours at a time, a few times a week, maybe. Now this is getting a lot more use, but the wear here on the sides, that is gonna start to lead to the potential for a short that could cause fire. So you can see this is starting to loosen up. This composite material here is not made to be able to be plugged in and unplugged. Uh, too many times certainly so it doesn't even require that much plugging and unplugging for this to start happening and then i'll show you on the back the other issue that we're facing so first let's remove these four screws and pull this thing out
the nice thing about if you do have a 1450 outlet in your garage like this, to swap this over to an actual wall connector, a permanent fixed charger, which is certainly the most recommended, it's so easy. The wiring's already here. You literally just remove the wires and swap them over to the wall connector. That is simple to do, so easy, but in this case, um, we need to just replace this outlet. We can see how this thing is wired up. We've got our uh, two hots and our neutral, and we have our ground up here. It's pretty simple uh, to wire these things up, and it's all color-coded. It's kind of hot still. So let's uh, get all these off. Some of these are not super tight, which is concerning. That's not super tight. You need to torque these down. Here is the one we just took off. And historically I've said, don't use Leviton, but that is a uh, comment about the one they sell at Home Depot. Leviton actually now has a EV specific outlet that they've engineered for this application. And like we're seeing a lot in the industry, this one is stamped with a green electric vehicle, signifying visually that this is rated for this type of an application. There's a few things that are done with this product that make it safer and make it actually usable in this application. And uh, I'll show you the differences uh, once I get this out of the packaging. First and foremost, let's align these the same way. So the first thing that you're gonna notice is the way that this thing is set up in the back and this may not fit your standard uh, wall outlet. So this may not be deep enough. In this case, I can see it is gonna be deep enough, but these are typically deeper in and you have to have an extra deep um, outlet here to receive that much material. We can see how much material is around where everything is gonna clamp down. Whereas down here, we don't have a lot of material that can help dissipate that heat. Over here, we're completely encapsulated. On the outlet face itself, you can also see a much larger face. This larger face does not change the distance in our prongs, but it does help with heat dissipation. You can see very clearly how much thinner the old one is than the new one. This is going to hold up a lot better and this material itself also is a much more robust composite that's not going to wear away like this one over here. Finally, I want to call out one thing and it is actually stamped on the back here. This is the most important thing. 75 inch pounds is the torque spec on these terminals. A lot of people forget that and just removing the one that I did that was not torqued. Clearly, 75 inch pounds is a lot. I do have a uh, torque driver with me so that we can make sure that this gets uh, properly torqued. Wiring, like you just saw, pretty simple. We'll do that now. So this is a, um, a, a torque driver for this application. I've got it uh, torqued to 75 inch pounds and that'll be for making sure all of these are properly torqued. It's so important that can cause a short and a fire, of course. So let's get this thing set up and wired up. Got that firm and we will fully torque those after. Okay, now that these are kind of firmly snug, now we're gonna go back and torque each of the four to the 75 inch pounds. It That is a lot more than you think it is. It does take quite a bit of uh, arm strength to get it all the way to the click. I mounted this backwards to see if that can hold it in place enough. I don't have a set of pliers. Yep, that's gonna work, good. Yeah, I just can't hold it by myself with that kind of torque. There we go, I guess that worked. So good tip, if you can't get this thing torqued just with your bare hands like me, and you don't have a pair of pliers to try to hold it in place, that seemed to work all right.
the threads on the outside are starting to get a little loose. So I told him he should probably look at replacing this box anyways when he goes to get a new cover because what you'll see, like I showed you earlier, that existing cover is not going to fit here. The face is much larger. So technically he shouldn't use this until that's covered for safety reasons, but um, he's an adult and can make his own decisions. We are gonna test it though, just to make sure everything is good to go. So first we'll hit the breaker and make sure we don't see sparks and then we'll turn it off and then we'll plug in and turn it back on. So let's do that now. All right, go ahead. Okay, I don't see smoke, don't see sparks. Don't hear anything. Okay, all right, so we'll turn it back off and then plug in and turn on. All right, let's plug that in. As you can see, no power. All right, go ahead and flip the breaker. And immediately starts firing up and we've got green lights. So that's a good sign. We'll plug in the vehicle now and make sure that uh, it charges uh, properly. That's a good start. So 32 amps, 242 volts, which is pretty good. So he should be able to easily get nine kilowatts out of this uh, charger here in his garage. Hovering right about eight, probably close to nine. So eight kilowatts and uh, that's a good solid charge. So that is just another new option on the market. I really like that they're starting to put the EV designation onto these outlets. I think that's where the whole industry is going and that's gonna really help with safety anyways. Please, 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 I implore you, based on my own failure and experience, check out the outlet you have in your garage. If you're using a 1450, this is one of the options that you should consider to replace it with. As you saw, it is literally a couple of bolts. You need to get a torque uh, bit, which I've got a link in the description for all of that. Swap it over. Just do yourself that now. Don't ever worry about this in the future, whether it's shorting out because the prongs are getting loose or that the wiring in the back is loose or the material itself is overheating. They're not made for that. This one is just like a couple of other options out there. Please take a look at what you got. I thank you so much for joining us today. Can't wait to catch you on the next one.